Hi, welcome to the next installment of our VHDL video, uh, sorry, VHDL design video series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about generics, and generics are ways to expand the basic functionality of a standard VHDL component by adding the ability to pass parameters to it at instantiation time, or at the time which you want to create the component. This allows for some great flexibility as far as VHDL design is concerned. You can create components and adjust their specifications at the time you implement them. So think about this for a second. If you could create a register and then that register could have certain functionality, say um, synchronous load and maybe a, a synchronous shift. Uh, you could create that component in an entity architecture pair and then not specify the size of that register. And then at instantiation time, or when you declare it in your architecture, you specify the size. You could use this same component to create a 16-bit shift register and an 8-bit shift register and a 4-bit shift register, all with the same component definition by simply passing an extra parameter to tell it how big uh, the component or the register should be. So it's a powerful tool that allows us to create some very useful components. So let's see how it works. It's it's pretty straightforward. One of the interesting things about uh, generics is that they do provide this method for passing parameters um, to, to a component at the time you create the component. All right. So a lot of times when we think of these designs and components, we're thinking in terms of hard defining their input and output ports and their specifications. And this is something that's fixed. And when you create the component in your design, it just creates multiple versions of that. But with a generic parameter, you can specify that parameter at the time in which you create the components. And that gives you some great flexibility, like we just said. Uh, it allows for more general descriptions and it reduces the development and debug time. So if you need multiple components, like if you need a variety of shift registers of different sizes, then you can definitely do that in a single definition, not in multiple components. So without the generics, you would have to create an 8-bit shift register component, a 16-bit shift register component, and a 32-bit shift register component, and keep those separate files together and make sure that if there were updates, you updated each one independently. Now, with this way, with generics, you can create a more flexible a component that means you don't have to spend as much time debugging them and figuring out what's wrong. All right, so let's take a look at how this looks in an actual component, and I think that's going to help us um, understand better what's going on here. So inside a generic component, when you're using generics, you have to use the keyword generic. Now, the keyword generic basically tells the, the, the system for simulation or for synthesis that you're passing a parameter. Now the parameter needs a type and a name, and we typically specify the name in all caps to indicate and reinforce the idea that this is a constant being sent to the component. In this particular example, we're talking about a register. So we're, we're creating a generic register where the size can be determined at creation time, when we create the component. And so we send that as a size uh, parameter as part of the generic, and we use positive as the data type. Now, positive is just a subclass of integer that basically represents values between one, integer values from one and, and higher. So it doesn't include zero. So that's why I chose positive for this one, because it wouldn't make sense to create a register with zero um, uh, bits in it. So we'll use the positive declaration in that case. Notice that the port declarations here are all the same. So the port declarations are similar to what we've done in the past. In this particular case, we just have a simple uh, data in, data out. This is as simple a register as you can create uh, in VHDL because our focus really is on the generic portion of it. And so if we take a look at the actual architecture of the component, we'll notice that the generic component is used throughout the declaration process. First, in the entity, we use the size component to determine the size of the data in and data out vectors for our entity. So yes, we describe the generic here as a generic part of the entity description, but down in the port, we're using that value to determine uh, 
the size of the input and the size of the output for this register. So I use size minus one because uh, all the standard bit ordering is uh, zero, ordinal zero, which means that it has a zero bit. So we just say, like if the size is eight bits, we would go seven down to zero. So size would be eight minus one, seven down to zero. And so that's why we chose to do it this way in the declaration. All right, now we can further use the, um, the size anywhere else in the design if I want to. In this particular case, we really don't need it in this particular declaration uh, because uh, of some generic things that we're gonna be doing down in the entity itself. Now, if we take a look down in the entity itself, we are basically assigning the values for the reset using the others clause. Remember the others clause we introduced um, a while back where you could basically just group assign all of the vector elements with the others clause and used in this way. And that's a very good way to do this because if you're trying to create a generic component where you don't know the size, then you certainly can't create some constant to initialize it with, right? So if we're going to be initializing all elements to zero in my 8-bit or 16-bit or 32-bit register, then I need to have a more general way of assigning all of the bit zero, and that's how you do it. And that's one of the reasons why when you're doing initialization, it's just a really good idea to do this. Now, the other part of this is just the assignment of the input, the output on the rising edge. So nothing new here. Uh, you didn't have to make any adjustments in this particular implementation. Now, before we leave this slide, I want to basically point out something that I think is really interesting because I had trouble with this when I started the HDL many years ago. When I learned about the entity declaration, I learned that, you know how to how to form the entity by by using the keyword entity in the register. And then I learned about how this port statement was sitting here, and it always perplexed me. Why in the world would I have to be so verbose and and keep typing entity and then port, and then why not just list the ports? Well, the reason is, is there's more than just ports as part of the entity declaration, and generics is one of those reasons. So that really helped clarify when I started learning about generics and said, aha, I see now. And so that's kind of an important thing uh, to recognize uh, early on, that the reason you did that was there are other things you can do inside an entity. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the next um, example of how to use the component. So so in this particular case, we saw how to declare the component. So how do we make any component generic? And we do so by just adding the generic um, element to the entity declaration so that it knows we're passing information uh, declaration time. But so how do we actually create the component in our design uh, and, and use it? And so here's just a very simple trivial architecture whereby we bring in this component. Again, this is the component declaration in the declaration se uh, segment. Obviously, this component was defined in that previous file. Uh, and then we have some internal signals here. There's an 8-bit bus internally, and then there's gonna be a 16-bit bus internal uh, to our design. And then what we're gonna do is gonna declare two types of registers. We're gonna declare an 8-bit register, and then we're gonna declare a 16-bit register using the exact same component. So we're basically creating multiple variations of our register in the same design using the same generic component. And so when we do this, it's a simple matter of, of taking the generic map and mapping it to a, a fixed value, in this case, eight for the size, and then a generic map uh, of 16 for this one. So we're creating in this particular case, we're creating an eight bit register and in this case, we're creating a 16-bit register. And notice that we're hooking up the, um, we're mapping the components uh, ports using positional encoding, not uh, named association, but basically listing them in the same order that they appear in the component. So you've got your reset, your clock, and your data in, and then your data out. Um, typically, it's better to do named association, but for brevity on the slide, in order to fit it in here, I chose the positional association. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at a, one last example, and I think this is a, an interesting example uh, that will prove very useful from one of our earlier video series uh, elements, and that was the, the synchronous chain. Remember we talked about how to take in asynchronous inputs or to go from two clock domains, from one clock domain to another.
Uh, and when we did that, we found that it was easy to use the synchronization change, basically chains of D flip-flops that actually helped with the metastability problem associated with asynchronous inputs. So, so what we've done here in this example is we've created a chain, a synchronization chain component that has as part of its declaration, a generic that says how many flip-flops you use. Remember, the more flip-flops you use in your synchronization chain, uh, the less likely you are to have a metastability problem. Uh, and and this, this increases with each flip-flop you add, so, so it gets better. So you can specify this um, in your design by simply putting in a generic component. Oops, wrong one there. So we simply putting in a generic declaration here of chain size and that's a positive value, so you indicate how many elements do you want in your synchronization chain. And so that fits in there, and then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. You have your reset clock, your asynchronous input, and then your synced, synced output on the output of this, this chain. So we've created a very um, use, uh, useful, a very um, beneficial component that we can reuse over and over in our designs and we can specify the level of uh, security we want in the thing. So if we're creating a medical instrument with this design, we can make it a, a synchronization chain of four or five if we want to, uh, to in, you know, really increase the, uh, or sorry, decrease the chance of having a metastability problem. Uh, but if it's in, in, a, in a relatively simple commercial design, two, you know, a chain of two would be more than adequate for, for most designs. So here's an architecture that utilize, or sorry, that, that where we declare the generic uh, component in there. Now remember, when we do this, we can actually use the parameter pass. In this case, it's chain size. So we can use the parameter pass as a way to determine what the size of our synchronization chain is. And so we're using a vector for that. So uh, it can, if it's a two, it'll be a one down to zero. If it's a, a five, it would be you know, four down to zero, and that would be our, our, our chain that we're declaring with the, um, for this component. And then basically it works just like anything else. We see again the, the initialization using the others clause because we don't know how big this is gonna be, but we can initialize them all to zero to start with. And then on the rising edge, we simply um, assign the chain and shift it. Now this is, this is shifting, um, shifting left, and we're gonna be using the high bit of the chain as the output. So we're shifting this left and we're using the high bit of the chain as the output, forcing the input to go in from, from the right all the way to the left until it gets to the most significant bit of whatever our chain is. Now I wanna point out something new that, that uh, we may not have seen in the past and that is this use of a uh, signal attribute called high. So high here is a signal attribute of of the sync chain that we created. And that's an important thing because that tells us what the high bit is. What's the number of the high bit? So if it's a two bit synchronization chain, that number would be one. And so it's going to pick out what, whichever one of that uh, or, or that is in our, in our system. So that's our high bit. Uh, and then that's, that's the use of the high. So we do that here too. We take the high bit of the, of the synchronization chain and then we use that as our synchronization output in our uh, synchronizer chain. So that's it for this. It's a relatively short video, but basically it talks about your generic inputs and how useful those can be in some designs. So when you're doing design of HDL, you want to make sure to design more robust, flexible components that you can use in multiple places, and the generic allows you to do that. All right, well, thanks a lot for your time, and we'll see you guys in the next uh, VHDL design video. Thank you. Bye.